The death of Imam Ali in Najaf this week, more than 1,300 years later, the sense of injustice still provokes grief. Iraq's wave of bombings play on an ancient sectarian struggle aimed at reigniting war between Sunni and Shia. Iraqis say they won't be drawn back into civil war, but Iraq's divided politics puts it at risk. The will of the people should be complemented by the will of the politicians, and they have to act coherently in order to find an exit from this horrible cycle of violence. And there is an exit, as I told you, it just takes them to sit together and to genuinely engage in a dialogue that will take this country out of the vortex. If politicians are failing the people, security forces are also struggling. In the height of the war, U.S. officials would say they didn't keep track of civilian casualties. Since last autumn, the United Nations has been releasing a monthly death toll. So far this year, 4,000 people dead. UN officials say they owe it to the victims and their families to remind the government that this is a crisis. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki is striving to keep together a coalition government made up of politicians who don't talk to each other. Sunni protests across the country demand the government's downfall. They accuse Maliki of ordering mass arrests and marginalizing Sunnis. After a huge prison break at Abu Ghraib, security officials say they're in an open war with Al-Qaeda. We do not absolve ourselves from the responsibility for this security breach. We are fully accountable in front of the people and our chain of command and God. Maliki's former ally, Muqtada Sadr, is at the center of a struggle for Shia political power. Shia religious leaders have so far warned their people against revenge for the attacks. The Shia community do not act alone, but rather with religious leadership, who show them the way. If sectarianism reappears, then the Shia community will make it a priority to form an army to defend its shrines and its imams. Here, people have an unshakable belief in the past. It's the future that's murky. Jane Arath, Al Jazeera, Baghdad.